Hello, welcome to the Randy Steffes Show. Uh, thank you for watching. And step number one today, thank Jill the camera lady, my darling wife. Step number two, what am I going to do? Well, I'm getting ready to reassemble. I've got the tape off the neck, except on the sides. I've been polishing metal parts, getting them ready to go back on. Lots of never dull and clean rags and popsicle sticks to get in nooks and crannies. And I just got some tool marks from the edging that I did. Got my 6,000. I'm just going to try and take those out. I'm going to have to kind of line them up. Might have to hit this with something harder to get those tool marks out. You never know. But, yeah, there's a couple of bad ones. Me and a file, man. Slipping, slipping, slipping. But it's rosewood. It's very forgiving. It's gonna, it's gonna be forgiving me. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. Well, you can say, thank goodness this isn't a maple neck. How long is this going to take? How long is this going to take? That's always the question. It's kind of the point of the whole series. How long, long is this going to take? What kind of can of worms shall we find next? One of the reasons I'm anxious to get this reassembled is I want to see how badly I've screwed up so far. What could you have screwed up? Uh, you know, if I was grinding a little too hard on one of these frets, I might have made a low spot. Is that really hard to do with the popsicle stick? <laughs> um, I've been very gentle, but you never know. You never know. I've been trying to avoid the leveling and recrowning part. These could be leveled and recrowned, but I don't really want to pay for that, and I don't want to do that job myself unless I practice first on something a little less valuable than my vintage Kramer. Anyways, I'm going to call this kind of good enough for now. Hit it with some lemon oil later. It'll come up. We have lemon oil? I have lemon oil. Yeah, yeah. I don't think it's actually lemon oil. I've been told it's not actually lemon oil. Just like a wood polish? It's like says lemon oil on it, and it's for fretboard conditioning. Mm. And this is going to get hit with some of it. I'm going to take this tape off now. Taking off the masking tape. What happens after the masking tape? After the masking tape, I'm going to put this neck back on the body. That's some pretty big stuff. Yeah, yeah. Actually, before I do that, I'm going to put the tuners back on it. Is that the... Uh... I'm going to leave this just in case I want to go at it with the file a little bit more. On these, on the fret sprouts, on the dreaded fret sprouts. Doke. Yeah, so hard straw. Some place soft to put this down. Soft and safe fish. Hard straw. Okay. Can I move something for you? No, I gotta kinda have it all handy to get it back together. Mm -hmm. I really don't know how to... Start with this guy. Okay. What you got there, Randy? This is the nut. And this is the treble side screw going to that side. And this is the bass side screw going to that side. And it goes right here. side and Allen wrench. Is it again the take out the screws, put them in the back in the same holes? Always, always, always. My philosophy. And why is that? I, you know, I think it just makes Size it easier. I think it just makes less, it easier. Less chance to fuck up. Less chance to screw up. No pun intended. Screwing up, pun intended. 
screwing up. Screwing this up. some final adjustments when I start setting up the guitar when I got strings on it. But now the tuning pegs are going to go back in. Are you sure there isn't a machine that could hold this camera better than me? No, because I'm going to move around a lot Okay. as I do this. So there's no good static shot I don't think. I'm just going to start putting these guys back together. And again, you're putting in the tuner back in the... Yeah, I'm putting everything back in where, it's, exactly where it where came it was. from. When I took it apart, I put them in here in, in order, in an order, order in my head. And, yeah, parts for the high E string go in that hole. Hearts for the high B string go in that hole on the parts box so I can easily go from part to part like a little while ago when I was just cleaning these guys all up and keep it all where it came from. Did people mess that up? Uh, well uh, prob or probably it doesn't really freaking matter if I put the wrong one in the wrong hole but you know sometimes these things kind of over time you know they they settle in in funny ways to the places where they want to be and it, it just all stuff. goes back together easier if you just work systematically and put things back where they came out of that's what I find anyways that is the theory around here. Tightening these up too much because I still got to move them to get this other screw in. How tight should they be? Like they got to be firm but not not super tight and actually they loosen up when, when you play so when you change strings it's always a good idea to check those. I got a neat little tool in my gig bag just in case I need to tighten one of these up on the fly so to speak. Okay, so E string one. That little screw that holds it in place. My pre selected screwdriver for the job. And not going crazy. This needs to be tight, doesn't need to be nuts. biggest fear now is dropping my parts drawer. That's when this all goes out the window. <laughs> Almost dropped it in one of the earlier episodes. It was a tough call. And yeah, just as soon as it's firm, I'm stopping. And then what are you doing after this step? After I got these parts back on the neck, I'm going to bolt it to the body. Then I'm going to get some strings on this sucker and reassess, reassess, reassess. Where am I at? What still needs to be done? What new can of worms will I discover? Who's cooking dinner? Who's cooking dinner? I heard you are. I think you're making cheesesteaks. So I might, I might need to, we may need to feed me. Yeah, well, at the end of this video, the kitchen will be returned from its status as a repair shop to a kitchen. And we'll make some cheesesteaks. Jill has mastered the cheesesteak. Better than Philadelphia. I swear to God, better than Philadelphia. Cheesesteak mastery. Thanks, Sophie. You're welcome, dear. All right. Finger tight. A little double check. Yeah, that all feels nice. They look pretty clean. I got in there with one of my popsicle sticks and a clean cloth, and I've got those little nooks and crannies. 
Everything looks very shiny. Everything's looking shiny. That's the goal. I said I'm going to make her shine. So, again, I'm just using a socket. This uh, 10 millimeter socket seems to be the best for the job. I'm making a finger tight with the socket for now. One thing I don't want to do is another 11 mil or 10 mil socket on this. I don't want to take this thing and go nuts and kill it and smash it. <laughs> I don't want it. Can you actually over tighten it? Oh yeah, you can totally over tighten happen? that. You're gonna sort of just start Snap crushing the wood. wood, you know, so. And then you gotta take it to 30th Street. And then we gotta go see Matt. <laughs> or I'm gonna be gluing stuff or something, so. Yeah, I am using this thing, but I'm just making them snug. I don't want them. The amount of tension you're using is very gentle. Yeah, this is gentle. They gotta be snug. They do like to, I don't know, no matter how snug they are, I've had guitars. You know, it doesn't move, it doesn't move, it doesn't move, it doesn't move, and then one day I go to change the strings, and guess what? <laughs> Somehow they make them their way loose, but if they're too tight, they, they start screwing things up. So yeah, I'm, I'm more just kind of using the weight of the wrench to tell me how much to tighten it. You know, that's, that's the tension, is, is the weight on the wrench. I'm hitting it a little bit. I definitely can't move those with my fingers anymore. I even try with the other socket. I can't move them anymore. So that's awesome. That's better than finger tight. I wonder what fell down on there. All right. Got some marks on this guy. I can't really read them. I still think this is from 1984. Oh, so you didn't make these marks? Either that's, or that's previous owner? That, yeah. That's probably someone's initials who put this together or inspected the neck or something. Yeah. It's number 16 here. I don't know why that is. Anyways, uh, this there's there was a shim in this sucker. I'm gonna put it, it back. Some of it's still here. I'm gonna come around there. That's the neck pocket. I've got to put the neck down I, for a second. I'm thinking the machine might be better at the next segment. The what? Your uh, still camera clamp. You just want to get out of filming. I just think it's about to do a better job than me. The most efficient tool for the job. I don't think so. Actually, three pieces of this gym. There's quite a lot of shim in this thing. Know, just put is that from the factory or a previous owner? I think probably a setup guy did this at some point. Okay. I don't think it had this from the factory. It might have. Somebody at the factory might have been shimming these things to get them out the door. This kind of material is pretty old. What kind of material is it? I think it's like drywall tape is what it is. That stiffened? No. Not really. Okay. That was all in there. Is drywall tape a good thing to use to shim? It's really common. Like uh, the first time I got my original old faithful Kramer, my first good guitar set up, it's what the guy used to shim up the neck. And he did it because I was trying to get a little more up pull on the Floyd Rose bar. Oddly enough, I don't bother. I'm just moving these screws back out of the way. I put them. If they're, they're, they're like threaded in here. They, they've got homes, you know, I didn't have to do much. Sometimes mm -hmm. they'll just fall out of these holes. But these guys, they, they live here. Also, um, on this back plate, a lot of the Kramers from this era, they have a piece of plastic in between the body and the neck plate. So that's a hint somebody was working on this thing. I swear this one's a little bit crooked. Looks like a different screw. I think screw. They're, they're all a little bit crooked. It does look like a different screw, eh? It's shinier than mm -hmm. the other ones. Maybe that was replaced at some point before I got this thing. I've never had this thing apart like this. I've never done anything but put strings on it and go play it. Alrighty. 
This is the first time you've taken the neck off this one? It's the first time I've taken the neck off this one. Yeah. And so now, now it's just tightening up the screws. How do you know how much to tighten up the screws? Is again super firm but not stripping? Yeah. It's another reason like I don't like using power tools on guitars. Mm. I have. I have used power tools on guitars. Sometimes they'll save you a lot of time. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they'll cost you a lot of time. <laughs> it's just, you know, if I worked in a shop every day and had a practiced hand, I would be using power tools, I'd be in a shop, I'd have a bench, this thing wouldn't be moving, everything would be a lot easier, but, you know. But it's our kitchen. It's our kitchen. It's our kitchen. I'm not totally going to go to town on this quite yet. I'm just trying to make it happy again. Happy-ish. Well, Less I'm just getting it ready to put some strings on it. Once I got some strings on it, I'll see where I'm at. Start setting it up, and if everything goes great, then it's just set it up, and I'm going to be done. And now we can have dinner? Well... I don't think I'm setting it up today. I okay. think after I get it back together, we're going to have dinner, get the laundry. But I'm going to get it ready for strings. Are you happy to have the neck back on? I'm happy to have the neck back on. I got it out of the sock drawer where it's been living because that's a safe place. And it's going to be safer out of there anyways. Duke. Floyd Rose is going back in. Can that be another segment? You want another segment? It's not, yeah, you're a lazy camera person, Jill. You want out of this, but it's not going to be another segment. I'm going to do it right now. It's really easy. No way. That's really easy. <laughs> it's pretty easy. Yeah, it's quite a glare coming off the uh, light. Is that better? Much better. That's much better. Alrighty. Step number one. Just gonna place it in its little holes. I'm gonna take my craft stick and hold it like that. Does that prevent it from scraping the guitar? Yeah, and it's gonna help it sit in the right spot. Here's where I find out if I screwed up putting the Floyd Rose back together. What tells you that it doesn't fit anymore? Well, if I put this block in the wrong way, this isn't going to work so well. So it's really held in by screws? Or, sorry, by springs? Yeah, the springs hold it in place. Ooh, and that spring is flying. God, that just loves to happen. It really does. What are you going to do? I'm going to make it easier on myself. Loosen those a little. I'm going to loosen these so I don't have to pull so much string tension. I'll lie it down. I'm going to do a little jogging here to protect that. Are you stepping on the... No, that's not the spoon. All right. Try again. Here's where working on guitars gets dangerous. All right. There's one. Oh, my safety goes again. You should probably be wearing, I should probably be wearing safety goggles. Can you get your, can I get the safety goggles? Definitely need those safety goggles. Can, can I pause taping to go get them? No, I'm just going to get these on here.
They're a little dirty, but. All right, safety first. I can now see nothing. Do you want me to clean those? No. Will you look for the spring? I'm just gonna, I, I got the spring actually when you ran away to get the safety goggles. I got the spring. You could go and buy a tool for this. There's some cool tools for it. This is just sort of the way I like to do it. I think this spring is just a little bit heavier duty than the other ones. It's a little bit different color, too. You can see I'm nicking my fingers. You want me to try? No, I'm just going to grab it right there again. Ah, oh, look, they're in there. Popsicle stick came out, but that's okay. No big deal. And yeah, we're ready to put strings on it. Doot, doot, doot. Doot, doot.